What's going on, folks? Uh, Family agent on another episode of Sneakers and Real Estate, uh, two of my favorite things that I love to talk about. Um, we're going to start with the sneakers today because I have an esteemed guest here, so I don't want to spend too much time on the sneakers. But uh, today we're going to be talking about the Jordan 1 Trap Call Quest. So anybody that's hip-hop should automatically know what this design is from. I mean, you know, if you're a Trap Call Quest fan, you had the Low End Theory album, then you should know exactly what this whole thing is about. Um, so these sneakers here, you can tell from the bottom that I wore the hell out of these. Um, these actually dropped in 2009. Um, I didn't buy them when they uh, first dropped, but I got it a little while after. Um, so this is the Jordan 1 Trap Call Quest High with the strap, as you can see. Um, this is a really, really dope shoe. Um, this is actually one of the first collaborations that uh, Jordan Brand did before they started doing stuff with um, Drake and all these different artists, uh, Travis Scott. Uh, like I said, this was done back in 2009. So um, this is really dope because you have the patent leather swoosh. You have the artwork from the uh, Low End Theory album on the side of it, which is uh, all in mesh, which is really, really dope. Um, this you can probably still find floating around on the uh, on the internet. Um, the hype around these wasn't as big back then, so these are still floating around. You know, if you could grab yourself a pair, you definitely need to grab yourself a pair. You need these in your arsenal. Um, really, really dope shoe. Um, like I said, I love everything about this shoe. I've worn these a bunch of times, and the material on this is actually really, really good. Uh, you have the Jumpman logo on the back, and um, these are still holding, still pretty good in a pretty decent condition. And you can tell just by looking at these that I've worn these, like I said, a bunch of times. Uh, the box, I don't even want to show you because it looks like it's been through a war. Um, but definitely, if you could find a pair of these, you know, like I said, if you're hip-hop and you're a Tribe Called Quest fan, you definitely need these in your life. Um, as far as uh, real estate is concerned, interest rates uh, right now, they're jumping all over the place. Um, right now, they're probably about six and a half, seven percent 7% on the interest rate. And, um, you know, if you ask me if I think now is still a uh, really good time to buy a house, I'm always going to tell you yes, because depending on what your situation is, if you're paying rent, um, you're not getting any tax breaks, any tax benefits from paying rent. So, I'm always going to suggest that you need to jump in the uh, in the real estate market and always purchase a house. Right now, the market is slowing down a little bit because we have the holidays coming up. So everybody is still um, getting the kids situated in school. The holidays are coming up, so everything is kind of slowing down. But, you know, the people that still have to buy it right now out there still seriously looking. So, like I said, the market is not as crazy as it was two or three months ago, four months ago, um, where – the, there was still a bidding war going on. Um, you know, you had to pay automatically just to get to the next level of negotiations. You had to pay at least asking price just to get to the next level of negotiations. And you may have to pay 50, 75, 100,000 over ask. Um, right now, that's not what's going on. So, so you have a, a very good chance of, uh, you know, getting yourself a home. Um, Inventory right now is um it's still pretty decent um not as not where I would like it to be but you know at some point it will get there like I said because we have the holidays coming up and the first of the year coming you know you do have a decent amount of inventory out there and um you know we're gonna jump right into it so uh, today I have uh, my esteemed guest uh, short sale queen short sale specialist. Uh, anything to do with short sale, I think if you look it up in the dictionary, you're going to see a picture of uh, my guest here. <laughs> so for those who don't know who you are and have been living under a rock, uh, let the world know who you are. What a nice introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I try to do my homework on you. <laughs> my, uh, my name is Melissa Gonzalez. I am a short sale specialist. I have been doing short sales for 18 years now. 18? 18 years. Wow. Okay. I started in 2004, 2005. I was licensed. Okay. And back then, it's funny because you were talking about the interest rate being at 6%, almost 7 And back then, they were 8 and a half, 9 you know, second loans were getting 12%, right. 15%. Right. And people just couldn't afford it. But they couldn't afford the homes. 
not because they couldn't afford it, because they were just buying houses and not being able to really qualify. To really qualify. Yeah, and that's when we got the market crash and all the Back in 2008, sales. right. Yeah, back in 2008, 2009, people, they just were buying so many houses, four, five, six houses, right. and, you know, they were not really educated enough to know what they were doing, and they were not living in these houses, so. Right, it's true. I mean, the market, you know, like you said, what it was back in 2004, 2005 is nothing close to what we're dealing with now. Um, you know, back then, if you had a pulse, you could get qualified for a mortgage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was very easy to be able to jump into the real estate game back then. But, you know, if you weren't knowledgeable about what was, you know, like you said, the ramifications of not paying the mortgage, what that, you know, what that would actually lead to. No one had any idea of where the market was, where the market was going and, you know, Four or five years later, we ended up, uh, you know, that's when the real estate crash happened. I think it was easier for you to purchase. Back then. Back then. I agree. But it was not easier for you to make money because a lot of people lost everything because they didn't even have agents that were educated enough. There was no podcast. They didn't really know what they were doing. So they were buying these properties and then didn't know what to do with them. Right. And that is the difference between buying a property now at a higher interest rate right. still, people feel it's higher, but pre-COVID, the interest rate were already hitting the 6%. It's true. So that is the difference. You want to work with people so that you don't fall into a foreclosure. And things happen. It's right. not that, you know, things happen, you can lose your job. But if you work with bot, with agents like yourself that you're putting the information you. out there, right. then you can say, you can get ahead of the game and say, listen, I'm already in this predicament. How can I get out of it right. without losing all my money? Right. Yeah, no, like you said, it's it's definitely t tough, and uh, thank you for that compliment. Um, yeah, no, the interest, the the real estate market is, um, I guess they've made it so easy for people to be able to jump in the game that, um, you know, people don't take the time to really educate themselves so that they can educate their clients. You know, when they want to get into a house that they're looking to get into a second or a third, you know, you have to understand, like you said, what you're getting into and, you know, you're about to sign pretty much your life away when it comes to this mortgage and when you don't make those payments, what are the ramifications of what could, what could actually happen? I think we saw during COVID a lot of people were depending on other people to pay their rent. Right. So when a lot, if you have to be a little bit smart enough, also a lot of um, buyers, when they buy a house, they just want to rent to family members. And right. then let's say for whatever reason, you're not renting them at the fair market value of right. the rental. Instead of saying, let me hire a professional, I don't pay them, and they'll do the work for me. For you. You know? That's true. And it's one thing that I've always tell, because I'm also a realtor. You know, I do I, I do a lot of short sales, but I've done my... The retail stuff, too, yeah, right? Yeah, I've done it. So I, right. I, 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 I've put in my time. <laughs> um, a lot of times that I tell, you know, when a client hires me to even do a rental, I right. said, you know, when you're hiring me, you already know that the person that's coming from a realtor, they're willing to pay that fee. So they are willing to pay for a service, and they're a lot of times more qualified. There's somebody that just wants to go through correct lists, and it's already Or come saying, off the street, yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, I don't want to pay for anything because they don't want to be questioned. Right. So when buying a second property, that's something that you really want to do because – you also have all that paperwork and all that stuff that's going to, if you need to take a client to court, right. you have that. You Whether have you're doing trail. a lease, it's true. you just, sometimes it's word of mouth. It's true. Yeah, yeah. like you said, for, for us, you know, as trained professionals, um, I'm 20 years in the game going on 21. You know, so for us, we understand that it's not just about that one deal that you're doing with that with that client. For us, everything that we do is yeah. based on relationships and, you know, we are going to take the time to, make sure everybody that we're bringing to the table is somebody that is financially ready, willing, and able yeah. to do what needs to be done. And also they understand there's a certain amount of paperwork that is required. And yeah. for, you know, for yourself and also for me, we're going to make sure that we get all those things. And if they're missing out on anything, we're not moving that deal forward because for us, it's about our name and it's about our integrity. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so for those who don't understand what a short sale is, you know, you hear it so much, but you know, some people still, you know, maybe are not educated enough to understand what it is. Um, what exactly is a short sale and how does that, how does, I guess when you buy a property, how does it turn into a short sale? So a short sale is a home that it's not worth on the market. What 
the market is going for, essentially. Right. So it could be from two different scenarios. Number one, you bought a home. Let's say let's use COVID as an example. Right. You paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars over asking. asking. You came out of pocket. You wanted that house. Um, the market shifts. Now all the mar- all the houses in that neighborhood are not worth what you paid because right. you went one hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars above asking. Above asking, and now everything in that neighborhood is selling for fifty thousand dollars less than what it, they're asking. The mar- the prices are not going up. So right now, let's just use a five hundred thousand dollars scenario. You pay six fifty for it. Right. Your neighbor's house is selling for five hundred. The interest rates are going so high. Right. You know, because a lot of people bought with a low interest rate. That's that, true. That has not been seen in years. In years, right. Right? So you were paying out of pocket. And so right now, you you bought a house for 550 I'm sorry, 650, 650. You, If 500 your neighbor sold it for 500 you wanted the house next door, you bought it for 650 because you wanted it. You and wanted I'm gonna, it so bad. And I'm going to pay the same price because... You know, the interest rates are two and a half, two and a half, three percent. percent. So it doesn't matter to me. Right. The, I see the market going up. The houses are only going up. Right. So <laughs> one scenario is three years down the line, everybody, the interest rates are so high or going up and everybody in the neighborhood starts selling for 500, 450, 400. 400. You want to sell that house. You no longer can sell it for 650. 650. So essentially you're underwater. Right. You do not have to be in foreclosure AKA stop paying your mortgage right. for your house to be worth less than the neighborhood. So you need to have, because some that's something that you don't have any control over. Exactly. Okay. You have no control over the market. That's something that's true. that nobody has control, right? None so of us have a crystal ball. Of, yeah. Nobody can, you know, foresee what's going to happen. Right. So that's one scenario. So if you wanted to sell the house, the, you either take a loss, sell it for the 500. If you put all this money in down and you, or you bought a cash, there's no, you don't have to do a short sale right. because all you have to do is get your money, you know. You get the difference of the money back. Yeah, and just take the loss. Right. Number mm-hmm. two is you lost your job, you went through a divorce, um, you got sick, you couldn't make your payments, and you fell behind on your mortgage. Or you even lost one of the incomes because maybe it was a two, two yes. incomes. Okay. Yes, if it was a two income home, you stopped making any sorts of mortgage payments. Okay. So after you stop making your mortgage payments after three months, you go into list pendants. Right. And the bank files with the courts something called the list, list pendants, pendants, which okay. means they're not paying me my money. I need them to pay me my money. Right. Um, and then you're in foreclosure after that. Because okay. that's when the foreclosure process starts, after yes. 90 days, right? Yes, after 90 okay. days, by 991. Okay. So the bank is coming after you to say, give me my money. So let's. there are people... Hard to believe that they haven't paid their house in five, six, seven, ten years. Yeah, we've heard stories. Yes. So what happens is you go to the bank and you say, Mr. Bank, I cannot sell this home for what I bought it for. Or for what I owe you. Or for what I owe you. Right. Sometimes you don't owe them a lot, but there's liens, judgments that you cannot pay to right. deliver a title free and clear right. to the next buyer. Right. So in that instance, you have to do a short sell. Okay. So it's not always, 99% of the time is you owe more than, than what, what the, the house, house is worth. worth. Okay. But a lot of the times is also there's a lot of liens, violations. You're not paying the taxes if right. they're enrolling your in your mortgage payment. your mortgage payment, payment. that's yeah. true. Yeah, so right. then you have a tax lien. You don't have any money. And you're basically like, I don't know what to do. So in that instance, you go to the bank, you hire a realtor, right. and you say, I want to list my home for sale. That's the first thing. Okay. I, I cannot afford this home. Okay. And then you go to the bank, and you start a short sale process. Okay. Basically proving to the bank, I cannot afford this home. I owe more. Or they there's these right. violations, and I want you to work with me to accept what I less than what I owe you, or to pay off all the t- judgments on the property. Okay, and then with the short sales, normally, whatever you end up selling the house for now, or let me not say that when you owe X amount on the uh, on the mortgage, and like you said with the liens and everything, it's now up to the bank to accept whatever offer that you get, and then they accept that as payment in full. Yes. So when you do a short sale, two things happen. One. Once you close on that short sale, your your credit goes up again. Okay. Because your credit is being defaulted and is going into the negatives. Right. The minute that you close on that short sale, 
you're free and clear from that debt. Okay. And uh, anywhere from a year to two years later, depending on what type of mortgage, you could buy another property. Right. So it basically saves your, your credit. If you go at a foreclosure, you cannot buy a house for seven, seven years. Seven years, right? Yeah. yeah. With a short sell, one to two years, you could buy a house. Okay. Um, and if you owe, let's say, a bank $1.5 because I see it all the time. Yeah. Oh $1.5 million, and they're like, okay, I'll take 500000 you you're um you're not responsible for that other million for the, for the difference dollars. of it. Okay. Yes. You're not responsible. They take it off their books, they give you a, you know, a a form, they write it off and you're not responsible. And it's on the approval letter. So okay. you get an approval letter and they say, Listen, once you pay me this money, I'm willing to accept. I'm no longer coming I'm accepting after you. this as payment in full. Yes. And okay. you're not responsible for anything. Okay. It's like a settlement. Okay. But then what also happens is with the difference of what you owe with the um with doing a short sale, I guess what's the um positives and the negatives of actually doing a short sale? Because a lot of people will say, I don't want to do a short sale because now I owe taxes on the loss. You that because I've heard you know you hear so many different no, things. Even though I've done short sales, but this there's is a your there's a form that an attorney gives you, and you you're really n- when you when they foreclose on your home. Mm-hmm. So here's the difference between a short sale and, and a foreclosure. And a foreclosure. Okay. So let's say your property is going on for auction for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. At right. the end of the day, the bank is always going to get their money, right. and they're going to get this house back. So a lot of people have the misconception of, you know, if they foreclose on it, I'm not, I'm not responsible, and I'm just living here for all these years. And not true, folks. And yeah, and I don't need to essentially. I'm just living for free. Why would I give them back the house? Right. It depends what you want to do with your life. It depends what you want to do after that. Because at the end of the day, they're always going to get their money some way, somehow. Right. So if, if a property goes through a foreclosure, meaning they went through the courts, they foreclose on the home, they're going to knock on your door and they're going to evict you. Right. Or they're going to tell you, give me, you know, they'll give you $2,000, give me my keys. and you, Or some people just leave and leave the house vacant. Because when they come and knock on your door, yeah. folks, it's very embarrassing. So yeah. I don't think you want to go through that. So they're going to come for you. So One way or another, way folks, or another, they're coming. Yeah. Right. So with a foreclosure, if let's say you owe them one point five million, right. let's just say that number, and they sell it at the auction for two fifty, they're coming after you and you're on the hook for the difference of for the hook. And I've heard a lot of clients say they have been garnishing my pace my wow. my Yeah, like years after. Like wow. why you took your house. You didn't pay them. When you fu- when you sign a mortgage you're saying to them all those documents at the closing table. Everything that you sign, folks. Yeah, I am responsible for all this money that I owe you. Right. So that's you know they they have the right to come after you. Now, when you do a short sale, you have the right to say, yeah, they can give it to you. They can give you a form like uh, I think it's a W four that they give you. Okay. And it's not a it's a ten four. It's a it's a W four, I believe. Okay. And you can write it off. As a loss. Right. You don't have to really essentially pay taxes on it. Well, yeah. you give it to your account. And yeah, they handle it. But I, I, not. And then there's another form that attorneys and I give to the bank. when And, and at the time of the closing, they also give it to their accountant. And they're not liable for any of the money because it's a loss. Right. Now, a lot of people have the misconception of, well, I've been paying all this money and I'm walking away with nothing. But you also have been... In many cases, depending on the scenario, be living not rent paying free. anything rent yeah. free for the last five, six, seven years. I actually read something the other day of some guy that um lived in his house for 20, 20 years and didn't pay a mortgage for twenty years. Yeah, I mean things like that happen. It slips through the cracks. But folks, disclaimer: don't think that you're gonna live in your house yeah. twenty years. That doesn't normally happen. So, but to be honest, it's a lot, I, I, working with a lot of people. They get to the point that they're like, I just want to get rid of this. Right. Because it's so stressful. It is. It's, it's very it's stressful. You get the phone things. calls yeah. and, you know, you're getting the letters and you just don't know what to do. And like you said, after the 90 days when it now becomes public record and everybody oh, yeah. knows now that you're oh, behind on the mortgage. On yeah. Somebody's knocking on your door. They put the, put the notices on your door. And then that whole now you're dealing with that whole embarrassing, you know, scenario that you have to deal with. So. You know, it, it's very smart, folks, you know, when you're dealing with professionals like Melissa to deal with her. You know, she is definitely here to help you. Um, you know, there's a lot of different programs that the banks have when it comes to short sales where they will, um, nine times out of ten, 
Um, they'll give you what they call relocation, yeah. uh, relocation course. Uh, some people also call it cash for keys. Um, but just like uh, Melissa just said, it also depends on what do you plan on doing with the next phase of your life. You know, if you're a 20 or 30 or even a 40-year-old, you know, once you come from underneath that um, short sale, hopefully not foreclosure because you listened to Melissa and actually did the short sale, now you can actually move on with your life. You know, after 18 months to, I think, two years, um, now you can actually go and you can buy another property. So, you know, instead of sitting there putting your head in the sand and thinking that nothing is going to happen, and then they foreclose and you can't do anything for seven years, right? You cannot buy a house for seven years. For seven years. I mean, if you're buying cash and you come into, like, a lawsuit, but yeah. um, I know the thing is that before... They were they will give the homeowners up to fifty thousand dollars, right? But that changed. Now it's ten thousand dollars, but you have to have like electrical bills and showing that you're living in the that property. you're living in the property. Yeah, okay. if the property is vacant, they won't give they you, won't give you any they money. They won't give you anything. Okay. Yeah, and some people think that, like you said, they can get up and leave, and you know the bank is still you know I can stand there with my yeah. hand out. Let me get my ten or twenty thousand, but that's not how it works. And another thing is that banks I, are very smart, folks. Yeah, another thing is that a lot of banks are smart enough to go to the homeowner and say, hey, let's just do a deed in lieu. Right. Which means you're just giving back the property to the bank. Like, hey, deed I in lieu of foreclosure, right? Yeah. Okay. But it is a foreclosure. You are Any way that you slice it, folks. Yeah, it's a foreclosure, but you're not getting anything from it. Right. You're still liable for the debt. It's coming up in your credit as a foreclosure. When you do a short sale, two things happen. One, you get to walk away with some kind of money for relocation. And dignity. And dignity. <laughs> and two, and two. Also, you're free from that debt, right? And it your credit goes up, and anything that's on the property, any liens, judgment violations, or your name, not just the property, right. gets taken care of. And that you, stays with the property; it doesn't stay with you. So you can actually get up, like you said, and get a fresh start. No, well, it's the same thing before. When oh, you, you were talking about deed in lieu. I'm sorry. No, and deed in lieu, you have to clear title. Right. So as a homeowner, I go to the bank and I say, hey, look, I just want to, I don't want the property. I don't want to deal with it. Just take it back. They'll say, okay, clear title. You owe Bank of America $10,000. You owe uh, American Express 15000 yeah. You haven't paid uh, your IRS taxes. You need to pay all of that for us to take the property back. Yeesh. They're not allowed to take a property back with, um, with any liens or judgment. Mm, okay. Now... With a short sale, whoever is buying that property is responsible for, for all those liens, liens and, and violations right. and judgments. So they're basically clearing your your your. They're giving you a new a new a start. first start, right? Yeah. So that okay. is the difference. When you do a short sale, anything that's on title, you're not responsible for because right. you're saying I have no money. Right. You're also saying the property selling the property as is. So it's like, look, I have no money. I have no money to fix the roof. Whoever is buying it. They take it on that way because they're buying the property as is. Hundred percent. So it's okay. it's a win win. Even though you're in a bad situation, situation. In a, you know, and things happen, I don't want people to feel like we're attacking them. We understand. It's just how are you going to get out of that situation right. and move forward? Right. And basically, speak with people that are going to have the experience, the knowledge, or going to help you find the people that that can do help have you. that have that experience and that knowledge. Yeah. So, like you said, for us, you know, um, it's about. You know, educating yourself, understand what's going on with the market. And, you know, essentially we're trying to do what's best for that, you know, for that client. Mm -hmm. um, so you were talking about deed in lieu just now. What is the um, what is the benefit of a deed in lieu of foreclosure? There really isn't, right? There isn't. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think so. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's basically your, the only benefit that you're going to get from it is that a bank is not going to keep calling you. Right. That's the only benefit. However, the minute you start in doing a short sale or – loss mitigation, mm -hmm. which is when you're working with them with, to, the bank. with the bank, they don't really harass you as much. Now they're calling the agent that, that you hired. Right. And another good thing about a short sale is that you don't pay nobody a commission. The bank pays for your attorney. The bank pays your transfer taxes. The bank pays um, even recordings. The bank pays the realtor fee. They will pay right. a realtor 6%. Right. And a lot of realtors shy away from short sales. The bank is paying Well, you. they shy away because they have no idea of how to do yeah. a short sale. And a lot of times, if I'm going to be honest, if you're going to use a realtor, make sure they know what they're doing. Right. Because if they don't, I've had realtors, you know, short sales that come to me after they've been with realtors, and they're, 
you know, they're like, okay, you owe uh, a million dollars. Let's list the house for nine 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 nine, and then they don't know that there's judgment violations. A lot of stuff on the But properties. like you said, it goes back to, you know, the agents that have no idea what they're doing. They, they haven't educated themselves mm-hmm. enough. You know, um, me personally, I've done over 100 short sales myself, and I've done the negotiations. I've done all those things, and that's this is why I don't have any here now, oh, yeah. which is why I push all of it off to you because you've spent more time with it and you understand it a lot more. Um, back when I was doing short sales, I know that the banks were saying, um, to actually be able to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure, you have to put the property on the market first, I think for 90 days. But I don't know if that's changed because no. I haven't done short they sales. Don't, to be honest, they, they'll they offer that. There are some, by the way, they do not have to do a short sale. They don't. They folks. don't. They can offer you a deed in lieu, a loan modification. They have to offer you or a short sale. So okay. they don't have to do a short sale. But if you're working with people that are knowledgeable and experienced, there are ways for us to to advocate for you and say, you know, I this understand. Is what's ne- this yeah, is what's needed for want, this particular you want purpose. This homeowner to to do, let's say, a deed in lieu because you just want the property back on in your hands and, and to be able to books. resell it. Right. But however, that's not beneficial to them. They don't have the money to pay all these stuff. Right. But a deed in lieu, they don't really ask. For, they they just say, what do you want to do? Okay. They're more open, but you have to pay for all the violations and judgments. Anything that's on title, you have to take care of. And I've had a lot of people that say, well, I don't owe any money. But let's use this scenario. Um, person A and person B inherited a home from their mother, mm-hmm. C, that passed away, and now they're the heirs. And the mother had no judgment or violations, but they are the legal owners of the property, of the property. because they are the heirs they, and they it's in foreclosures. Right. So they say, you know, I just want to sell it. Sometimes person A and B have so many judgments that even though they're not on the mortgage or title, right now they're the legal owners of the yeah, home. Yeah. All of that has to be clear. So in a case like that, that somebody passes away, like I'm not. I don't, I don't have any ties to this home. It's not going to be a foreclosure on my name. Right. Yeah, but if you do a short sale, you can give the home to somebody else that will love the home right. and will make it their own. Their own, right. And you're still getting free and clear. Right. So with a short sale, you're basically walking away with no debt. And when I say no debt, I don't mean if you owe your cousin money, but anything that's on your credit report. The bookies, report, we're not talking about yeah, any of that, folks. Anything that's on your credit report gets taken care of. Right. So it's like a really a it's a it's a win win yeah, or really, really like is. you said for for people like yourself and also for me we advocate for our clients so for us is we're always trying to look to do what's best for the client mm-hmm. um, you know that's what a lot of people don't understand like you said you know the the agents who take on these short sales they have no idea what to do with it they they're not educated and they're thinking they're doing the right thing you know for that client but it's really a disservice because at the end of the day you almost are holding whatever they're looking to do in their life going forward. You're holding that in your hands, and you have no idea how important that is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I try to tell people all the time. So um, what you would say, I guess your advice for anybody that's um, underwater or is in a position or they can't pay the mortgage, what would, you, what, would, what would you suggest that they do? Number one, stop asking advice from people that don't know what they're doing. Right. That's number one. Or well, th- people who don't have to live with the consequences yes. of the, okay. Because I've honestly, if I've seen a lot of people go to their family members um, or friends or not, because sometimes they don't want to go and say what's going on in their life. But You're in too general, embarrassed. Yeah. And right. Stop paying an, att- an attorney to do a loan modification oh for God. you if you cannot afford this home. There's a lot of attorneys that a are lot of attorneys. We're monthly. not knocking all attorneys, but yes. I know a lot of them yeah. too. They charge you five thousand, ten thousand, even three thousand dollars a month right. to work on a loss mitigation for you, and they know that you cannot afford this home. Right. So they what they're doing is they're just prolonging the process, and you're coming out of all this money in your pocket. Where it's like, let me just save the money, maybe buy a house down the line because right. I'm not paying my mortgage. If you know you cannot afford the home. Just walk away. There's a lot of people that are in denial. It's better to do something at the beginning than towards the end. You you have to be proactive, like you said. I also know, you know, a lot of people who pay attorneys 
and they're thinking the attorney is actually doing something. And nine times out of ten, the attorney isn't doing anything. They're collecting that money every the month. Problem. And we're not knocking all attorneys, but we know a lot of shady oh, attorneys yeah. who take the money every every month from that client and is not even doing anything with the file. Because if the person's situation hasn't changed and you're telling them that you're trying to work on a loan modification for, for them, if you're not showing any income, nine times out of ten, the bank is going to deny it anyway. So when you're taking that money and you're telling that client that you can get this done or you can get that done, and you and I both know that nothing could get done, it's like, what's the point of even doing that to a person? To be honest with you, a lot of people go to loan modifications because they want a lower payment, right? not knowing that all of those payments are going to be added to your mortgage. It gets deferred They're, to the end. They yeah. put it to the end if you qualify for it, folks. Exactly. And you have to prove, like, uh, we were speaking about uh, forbearance, and I know we're jumping all over the we're place. We're all over the place, yeah. Yeah, but... Just get the gems, folks. Yeah. Pay, pay attention. What what I will say is, if you know that you cannot, you know, afford your home or you're in a predicament that you foresee yourself in the next six months, like this is too much, and you're not in foreclosure as of yet, right. but you foresee yourself being there, the first thing I will say is get an agent, list your house, get rid of it, and try to get some equity. Number two, if you are in a foreclosure and you can't afford it, Interview people that are in that field. Do not go get an agent that has never done a short sell, that has never worked with an attorney, that's just going to give a file to an attorney and just put it there. Again, I'm not knocking any attorneys. There are very good attorneys that know how to do short sales, right. but I can al almost tell you a lot of people are not going to sit on the phone calling every day, every minute of their day. What's going on with this file? What did you do? How's it going? You need to t work with people that know what they're doing what they're or doing. at least hire an agent that works with people that they are. I'm not telling an agent to do a short sale. Right. I'm a real estate agent. I have my own short sale company where all I do is negotiate short sales. I work with agents. They get paid. They get the commission. Whoever's buying the the, the property, the property right. hey, there's a fee that goes to the negotiator who's handling the short sale, and they're going to do it in a quick, you know, turnaround time. Turnaround time. That's your job. They're there are so many things that go into a short sale. That's what a lot of people don't understand. That a lot of people don't understand. It's not just getting a number that works for everybody. It's also advocating for both clients. That's true. It's also advocating, hey, the bank wants all their money. They want their money. Right. So it's not just... And they're saying, not agreeing. Like you yeah. said, they don't have to do a short sale. They folks. don't. Make they sure don't. that you understand that. So when you're working with a bank that's even willing to listen to you, you want somebody that's giving them the paperwork as soon as they as ask soon for as it. They ask for because it. if not, you got to start all over. All over. So that's one thing. Another thing is, if you're in a forbearance, because we, we touched about forbearance. Right. Banks are telling you for you to go back, you need to either, one, put all of this and get essentially like a second loan. Right. And, or number two, you got to pay them all that money that you owe. And you cannot just go and sell the property. I mean, you can sell the property, as Hopefully, long as the like you agrees. said, that's right. If they, they agree to because it, because they also have to give you like a payoff, but you can sell the property. But if right. you're already in foreclosure, a lot of the times it's really hard because that once they hire their attorneys, they're adding all those other all fees. those fees. So if you were gonna walk away with, let's say, you owe them 400 and you're like, okay, I could sell it for 500 on this market right now, right. and you were gonna walk away with, say, $60,000, you have no judgment because you gotta pay transfer taxes, realty fees, right. you know, all of that, and you're doing just a regular sale. Once you stop paying, you're no longer gonna walk away with anything. They're just eating all your money and all your equity. And with for, all those fees, like yeah, you said. Yeah, and the forbearance, everybody thinks that you can just refinance and, like, you. <laughs> First of all, the interest rate are so high that right now nobody wants to refinance if you have anything under 5%. Right. Number two, you have to be up to date for you to be able to refinance. So if you haven't paid in six ten, months, six months, seven months, 10 months, a year since COVID, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And it's not going to happen, folks. Yeah. So the best thing that I will tell anybody is like, just be honest with yourself. And it's better to get away from it, maybe rent. And then in a year, go be able to buy something else again right. instead of just, you know, accumulating money and money, money. Racking and, up and, fees. Yeah, and, and yeah. It's, 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 it's just not, it's mentally draining. And I see a lot of people lose their houses. I've also seen a lot of people say, hey, listen, the market is going to crash. Why don't you stop paying your mortgage? Don't listen to people. Do not. Well, the people that are always going to tell you not to pay are the same ones that live in their mom's basement. And they, yeah. live, they live next to the boiler room. So I don't listen to people like that. And I try to tell people all the oh, time. Stop. You have to listen to the people who actually 
are going to be involved in that whole situation that actually has to deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're listening to people who, like you said, who have no idea and have nothing to do with the situation. So, you know, going back to what you were saying before, homeowners, if you are behind and, you know, you are trying to figure out what to do, you know, if you're – Brother, cousin, just got their real estate license and you want them, you want to give them the house. That's not the right way to go, folks. You want to make sure that you're dealing with professionals like Melissa, like myself, people who have been in the business, um, you know, a uh, good amount of time, but also are knowledgeable about the short sales, the process, and can put you in contact with all the right people. Um Real quick, um, what are your thoughts on the forbearance? So, you know, what, what has been happening since COVID? Because a lot of people weren't able to work and, um, you know, the banks gave them different alternatives. Or some weren't able to work. Let me not say that because we still had the essential workers out there. So what, are, what were your thoughts um, when you saw that come out? I advise everybody that was working and collecting unemployment to not do it. Okay, to, conti to continue to, to pay continue that mortgage. To make your pay mortgage payment. Continue to make your payments. When you were in a forbearance, your credit was going down. Right. Even though you were in a forbearance. Right. And essentially, you have to, there were government pro programs that came out, but they were given certain amount of money for people to catch up. And a lot of people were not educated enough. A lot of people were not contacting the bank. A lot of people did not know that there were money out there. I didn't know that there were money out there. Right. I didn't honest, know that either. I didn't know. They were giving they were giving so much money, like depending on the state. So like let's say uh New York rent and mortgage is very high. Right. So they were giving up to twenty five thousand dollars for you to reinstate your, your mortgage. mortgage payment. Oh wow, okay. And but it was a grant and it was like the first hundred thousand people. Let's mm, say there's okay. mil you know millions. They gave certain they allocated a certain amount of money. Right. And I didn't know that to be honest. And I have you know, you develop certain relationship with negotiators when you do the same then deals over, with or, them over, yeah, of course. and transactions. And they told me, they're like, listen, we these investors do not have to offer you any kind sort of, you know, repayment plans. They don't have to work with you. Right. Um, everybody felt because it was the same government kind of when Obama was in office right. and he was giving all of this program different incentives. Yeah. Right. What you know, and that's when they were giving the relocation fee that the same thing was gonna happen. When the loan modifications, it's not the same market. So you cannot compare 2008 when everybody was getting mortgages that didn't qualify for as... Oh, getting bailed out, like yeah, you said. Yeah, 2020, 2022, when you could qualify for your mortgage, you just chose not to not pay, to pay your mortgage. And they're going to ask you, I need to see your proof of income. I need to see your bank statement. I need to see your taxes. I need to see that you weren't really not working and not just collecting all this money and decided not to pay my mortgage. Right. Like, they have systems in place to make sure they you're not lying to them. They can check that, folks. They can, yeah. they, right. They can it's, tell if, you know, you're telling them that you're not working, but, you know, you're in the medical field and you are an essential worker, so yeah. you have to go to work every day anyway. Because what they do is they compare your, especially if you just got a mortgage. So let's say you got a mortgage and it's with the same lender. They're like, hold on. You got a mortgage in 2019. You were a doctor making $200,000. And now COVID happened and you're making $400,000 because <laughs> you're working overtime. Over but you time. can't pay your mortgage. So they look at that. Right. So the forbearance are there. But if you can't afford your mortgage, I say pay it. Right. You know, and it's I try to tell people that all the time. They called me and they were asking my advice. I'm like, you're in a position, you're still working. What yeah. is the point of not paying it? A lot of now a lot of banks are not giving you that much of an option. Right. And at the end of the day, you're getting a second mortgage for that for whatever you owe. For the difference, I was yeah. just about to say that because it, what I'm what I'm hearing, and you correct me if I'm wrong, whatever you stop paying or whatever goes into forbearance, the bank is now putting another position mm -hmm. on your mortgage. So now if you have a first and a second mortgage, now that forbearance or the difference of that money now goes in, in the third position, correct? Correct. Okay. And you still owe them the money. So essentially when you sell your property, let's say let's say you did a forbearance and now all of that money is there, you know, and, and it's towards the back and you owe them three hundred thousand dollars and the house is worth now let's say four hundred. You're gonna walk away with nothing. Right. Because you did the forbearance, you did the forbearance, and you gotta pay that, and not just that, you gotta pay the realtor fee, right? Right, you gotta pay attorneys' fees. Realtors gotta get paid, folks. Yeah, if there's any liens, judgment, if you owe somebody money, you know, the, there's a construction lien on the property, you gotta pay that. So essentially, 
you're underwater. Right. Because you cannot afford to walk away from the house clearing the title and clearing everything that has to be paid. And in that instance, you got to do a short sale. Right. And banks are putting sell dates on their property left and right. So if you didn't pay them and they couldn't collect for two and a half years, they couldn't evict you. Because everything was on hold. Yeah. Right. They couldn't put a foreclosure sell date, even though you haven't paid them from like, let's say, years. You got another two, three years to pay during COVID. Right. right. So it's like all of they're so upset that they're like, I want my money. I couldn't do anything, you know, and, and rightfully so. If somebody owes you money. I want that money, folks. You owe me. I, I got to get paid. I got kids. The kids got to eat. So. So. Yeah. So that's. that's Shoes got to get, you yeah. know, we got to buy sneakers. Yeah. So. Right. But in a short sell again, you don't have to pay a realtor. And if a realtor or an attorney comes to you and says, you got to pay me, the bank pays them. Don't do, there's no double dipping, folks. Yeah, that's, there's that's no double dipping. Right. Um, they pay, uh, sometimes a lot of banks will pay the judgments because they want, you know, the bank doesn't have the right over the property until they until, foreclose on right. you. So they basically want to work with you because they, they want their money back. Right. You know, even though they wrote it off the books, even though they they have insurance for that, they want their money because right. essentially they want to get paid. They want to get paid. Right. So they're willing to work with you as long as you're willing to communicate with them and, right. and, and you know, be cooperating. A lot of times they are like, listen, I tried to talk to this person for years and they didn't want to yeah, work They didn't want to talk to me, yeah. So right now I don't want to help them and they have the right to do they that. They have the right to do that, yeah. yeah. So I, just I get agree. ahead of the game and just hire somebody, you know, make sure that they know what they're doing. And how do you do that? You ask them, how many times have you done a short sell? What is the process? How long does it take? Um, usually with me, it takes me 30 to 60 days to get a short sell approved, depending on the lender. Right, because different on, lenders, right. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the lender. And it also depends on the homeowner, the realtor, whoever's involved. Them cooperating, the giving you all the documents, giving, giving you everything. everything that you need. Yeah. Right. So, you know, how long is it going to take? Now, let's say that you're a homeowner and you have a child in the school. And you say, you know what? I do want to do a short sale, but I need to live in this home until September, let's just say. Right. Or June. Where? June. Because we're in June. October now. Yeah, we're in October. till so June. You could start the process. And you can, you know, say, hey, look, I'm going to live here. You are also allowed to live there for like 90 days if you don't have money. Now, if the bank gives you money to relocate. Then you have to go, especially if you want that relocation money. Yeah, at the closing table, you will get the money to move, and you could stay in the same school district. Because if it's, they're giving you $10,000. They give you up to $10,000. 90% of the time, they are giving you the the, the $10,000. And an apartment, let's say you need a two-bedroom, three-bedroom apartment, you're not going to pay $4,000. So you could start over, over and, and right. you know, and still stay in that same school district. But and you, hopefully you have the whatever savings, you know, from the money that you didn't that pay you when didn't you weren't paying pay. the mortgage anyway. And the bank pays so the taxes no and insurance. So, you know, it's just a way to say, you know what? Things happen. Right. I am in that predicament. Right. And let me just start Get ahead over. of it and be proactive. Think about it like a divorce. You're in a yeah. bad okay. situation. That's true. You know, you got to... I wouldn't have used the voice, but okay. No, but it is because... But you're right. It's it's a way to start over. Right. Right? You find yourself in a predicament. You just got to be real with yourself. This is not working for me. Right. I'm not in a good place. Right. Let me save whatever I need to save. When this relationship is over, I'm going to... I'm I can move on with my I life. I can move on with my life. And come out ahead. Okay. And come out ahead. That, okay. That's what a short sale is. It's a, it's kind of... That's a, what a divorce is. Okay. Yeah, that's, you know... I'm saying like you no, know, no, that's a great analogy. It's it's just I didn't a look way at it that way for you to start over and say, I'm just you don't want to do it a lot of times right. and you're you're like stuck in the situation. And in a short sale, a lot of people are in denial. Right. A lot of people are like I, I invested so much money, especially first time homeowner, yeah. especially minorities, it's especially tough. people yeah. who are like, This was my dream to buy a home. Right. Why am I just gonna give it? This is something that I need to tell you guys. Stop thinking this investor is going to get the house for more, for less. They're going to make all this money. Stop. It doesn't matter what the person Stop. gets it for. Pump as, your brakes, folks. Yes, as long as you get to walk away. Because they're With going your dignity. To, yeah, they're going to do all the work. They're going to clear the titles. They're going to pay for the violations. Then a regular person doesn't have the... You're not in a position to do it. Yes. Right. Can we just talk about buyers... Regular buyers who want to buy short sales. Sure, let's get let's get into it. Because it's very important. You always get buyers. Please Where find me. A, please. 
Oh, please no, no, find me a short sell. Right. Please find me a deal. I want to buy a foreclosure. How I'm you sure you hear that all day long. All day long. Please, I need to buy a foreclosure. I'm like, you're an FHA buyer. <laughs> you don't have closing costs. You want to get a seller's concession. Do you know that when you're buying a short sell, you as a buyer have to be responsible for all the fees, extra fees that are on the property? Do you understand also as a buyer, when you go to see a property, you're buying it as is. Right. This homeowner has no money. They're not going to fix anything. They're not fixing the roof. They're not doing any of those They're things. Not doing so anything. that's the difference between retail, real estate, and short sale. Short sale, you're buying as is. A regular property, you can probably negotiate certain things. So folks always know the difference because you guys call us all the time. You know, I'm looking for a short sale. I need to buy a house for 300000 even though the going rate for a house in that area that you're looking for is five fifty or 600 Folks, it's a needle in a haystack. And also, even if that investor, sometimes the investor, like I've, I've you know, when you do a flip. Right. Right. And the person goes, I saw public records. They bought it for 300000 and they want to sell it to me for 600 What does it matter to you? What they did the work. They did all the work. They did all the work. They got all the permits. Right. Right. You don't know what other fees are attached. That, were all, that was included. You're right. If there's judgments, violation, if they need to pay extra fees for a tenant to be evicted, right. you don't see that on the sale price. You never see that. Yeah. They just look at, like you said, public yeah. records. I hear so, that all the time. So you guys need to stop with that misconception of right. it doesn't matter. Worry about what you can afford exactly. and worry about, you know, you're getting a property that you might not have the money to do all the repairs. Yeah, it's funny. I had someone, you know, reach out to me the other day and they were asking about a property. They said that they looked on public record and saw that this person paid X amount. So we'll give them 65000 above what they paid. So even though I wanted to hang up the phone, you know, of course I couldn't. Um, the property ended up selling for $150,000 more than what they paid. So it's like when we talk to these buyers, and folks, please listen carefully. We try to do our best to try to educate you. It doesn't matter what a person is paying for a property. You don't know what else is going on behind the scenes. And at the end of the day, if somebody buys a property for three hundred. dollars and it's worth 600 now. You have no idea how much money they spent to renovate the property. You have no idea how much liens, judgments, all these different things that have to be paid. You have no idea how much they had to pay the, for permits and all those different things. And at the end of the day, if they did the work, listen, don't they deserve to eat too? Don't they, if they need to buy sneakers for their kids, don't they deserve that right to be able to do that too? Or am I wrong for saying that? I'm going to say one last thing about the short sale in the market. Okay. I have a lot of clients, people that are coming to me and they're saying, I'm going to wait because there's going to be a lot of foreclosures and the market is going to drop. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you three things. Tip number one, for you to get a short sale, you need to convince that seller to sell the property to you or to sell the property in general. Right. So even though there will be a lot of, People who are behind, if they don't want to sell their home, they don't have to. And you can't force and them to. And you can't force them to. They have to be willing and able to cooperate to sell the property. Right. Number two, for you to buy a short sale, even though there will be a lot of scenarios, people who have cash who are going to close in 30 to 45 days are going to have an upper hand on you that are trying to get a, a mortgage. mortgage without knowing how much the interest rate are. And even if you do conventional mortgage, you don't know how long it's going to take the lender. If you lost your job, you like a lot of things could happen. It's true. And a regular buyer, can you buy a, sh a short sale? Yes, you can. But you're not going to get it for that same price because, again, you know, you're not going to get it as an investor who's coming in cash. An investor is always going to have the leverage. Yeah. Because they're also going to pay all the judgments and violations. And you may not want to do that. As, as a buyer, you may say, okay, I'll buy a short sale, um, but I want the house to be, you know, you want to nip and pick, and, and I want it to be in this neighborhood. You don't have that choice. Right. You, you don't have a choice of how far is it going to be, or can you show me another short sale because I don't like this. And that's something in the retail market. You have the right to say, okay, I want to live in all these neighborhoods right right you also have the right to say where you want to live but what you don't have we don't have the option to show you 
the same amount of chore sales in all these other neighborhoods as residential houses. And because that's, there's not that many. There's yeah. not as many short sales there as there like, are retail. There right. may be one, two, three to every in a mile right. when there is 50 for sale. So that is the difference that, you know, you also don't get to choose what kind of house you're buying. It is, it's what's there. You right. either take it or leave, or you it. leave it. So that's an, uh, that's an issue that a lot of people are like, well, I want a foreclosure. And I'm like, but you're basically settling for your dream home. Right. You could make it your dream home in the future. In the future, right. But you're settling because you're paying less. If you don't have the cash to fix the house or you want to do a 203K loan, you're you're paying a contractor's price. You're not paying your uncles to fix it. You need to be licensed, licensed. to do all that. And you're working off of their timetable, not your timetable, folks. Exactly. So that's something with buying a foreclosure. And number three. And watch out for these shady contractors. I got a video coming on that, too. Yeah, there's a lot of shady contractors. Yeah. And number three. That I'm dealing I with one right now. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> number three is don't wait to buy a house based on what everybody else tells you. Buy a house. When you are ready to buy a house, when people ask me when is the best time, when you can afford it. Right. Because the good thing about the market shifting right now is that you could get a house lower. Right. And then when the if and when the interest rate go low, you, you can, can always refinance. refinance. Right. You know, and if the interest, I had a client, a regular buyer, we're looking at a house, 400,000, interest rate were three and a half percent. She said, no, my son told me not to buy a house oh, because great. the interest rate are going down. Guess what? Now she cannot afford a home because that that was her max, four hundred thousand. Right. Right. Interest rate are seven percent. They were three and a half percent, and she is paying double for that house than what she would have paid. Good job, son. Ago. I hope she's living with you. So stop listening to people's opinion and listen to people who are doing the work. Put in the information there for you. Don't listen to your uncle and your cousin and, and, and people that really are not on in the market. Like, right. you're not in the market. You, you don't have an experience. You're not going out there every day. We're in the streets every day, folks. We outside, for real. Like, for real, for real, we outside. And sometimes finding a deal doesn't necessarily need to be a foreclosure. Sometimes sure. finding a deal is going to a homeowner who is not in foreclosure and it just wants to get rid of the house. They've Again, been there 30, 40 years. You can still go in there, like you said, put your own spin on it and do different things to the house. They're to going make through it. a divorce. They don't want the house anymore. They're like, let's just sell it and let's just get, you know, we don't want to live together. And you could get a deal. Sometimes... Or a house that's not brand new that needs a kitchen or a bathroom, right. you'll get it lower than a house that's on the market fully renovated. Right. So there's deals everywhere. Just work with an agent that's willing to listen to you and put in the work. Okay. So we're going to wrap up now, folks. Um, I want to thank Melissa for uh, coming on. Uh, I think we got to do another one probably just on forbearance alone. Oh, yeah. um, what is the best way for folks to reach you? Uh, you can reach me on Instagram at Short Sales by Melissa. Or my office is 516-253-1953. folks. So when you're calling her, hopefully you have a short sale to sell. Don't call her just to waste her time. She's a business person. We're all business people, folks. Um, if you are behind in your mortgage, you can also reach out to me. Um, I do a lot of short sales, and I can always connect you with Melissa. Um, you know, if you're looking to sell your property, you're you looking to buy a property, reach out to me. Me and my son, we can definitely help you. Uh, Femity Agent on all socials, 917-337-3727. Have a great day, folks. Stay safe.